The Chinese Type 99 main battle tank, also known by its industrial designation ZTZ-99, represents one of the most ambitious steps in China's quest to modernize its armored forces at the turn of the 21st century. Emerging from the lessons learned during the development of the earlier Type 98 prototype, the Type 99 was designed not only as a technological improvement but also as a clear demonstration of China's ability to create and field a third-generation tank that could hold its own against the most advanced Western and Russian designs. Its development, introduction into service, and carefully limited deployment reflect both the achievements of China's defense industry and the strategic caution with which Beijing has chosen to employ this powerful yet complex machine. The origins of the Type 99 can be traced back to the late 1990s, when the Type 98 appeared as a transitional platform. Engineers and military planners were quick to realize that the Type 98, while advanced for China at the time, lacked several attributes that would make it a competitive peer to foreign counterparts such as the American M1 Abrams or the Russian T-90. The focus quickly shifted to producing a tank that incorporated greater mobility, improved protection, a more sophisticated fire control system, and survivability features that went beyond the traditional combination of armor thickness and firepower. The result of this push was the Type 99, which entered limited production around the year 2000 with an initial batch of 40 tanks. These early vehicles offered a glimpse into the future direction of Chinese armored warfare, a synthesis of indigenous innovation and selective adaptation of foreign technologies, crafted into a machine intended for both deterrence and prestige. One of the defining features of the Type 99 is its armor concept. Unlike the simple rolled steel or even basic composite arrangements of earlier Chinese designs, the Type 99 employed a more complex combination of advanced composites supplemented with modular explosive reactive armor. The frontal arc of both the hull and the turret was clad with blocks of reactive modules, initially attached externally but later more seamlessly integrated into the design. These modules could defeat incoming shaped charges and, to some extent, kinetic penetrators by detonating outward at the moment of impact. The modular approach allowed battlefield repairs to be carried out more quickly, since damaged blocks could be replaced without extensive overhaul. The turret cheeks were thickened and reshaped over time, evolving from forward-angled extensions to a more sophisticated, sloped profile that better distributed the angle of impact and made room for additional blocks of explosive armor. Later iterations of the tank also placed modules on the roof of the turret, offering some protection against top attack munitions, which were becoming increasingly common in the arsenals of potential adversaries. This continuous evolution illustrates how the Type 99 was not a static product but rather a platform subject to iterative refinement as combat requirements changed and as the Chinese defense industry absorbed more technical lessons. Beyond passive and reactive armor, the Type 99 introduced one of the most unusual and controversial active protection features in tank design, the JD-3 laser countermeasure system. This suite combined a laser rangefinder, a laser warning receiver, and a directed energy emitter that could respond actively when the tank was illuminated by enemy targeting lasers. The system was programmed to alert the crew, automatically traverse the turret toward the detected threat, and fire back a low-power beam to confirm the target's location. It would then deliver a high-intensity laser pulse designed to damage or disable the optics of hostile rangefinders, missile guidance systems, or even to dazzle the eyes of human operators. While the practical battlefield effectiveness of such a system has been debated, its inclusion underscored China's determination to pursue innovative, even unconventional, means of improving tank survivability. It also signaled a recognition that modern battlefields would not be dominated solely by armor and shells but also by sensors, optics, and guided weapons, all of which could be disrupted by directed energy. At the core of the tank's lethality lies its main armament, a 125mm smoothbore gun, manufactured domestically but closely modeled on the Russian 2A46 series. This weapon was fitted with a thermal sleeve to reduce barrel warping during sustained firing and was paired with an autoloader of carousel design, allowing a crew of three instead of the traditional four. The carousel could hold 22 rounds ready to fire, 
while the total ammunition carried by the tank reached 41 rounds. The variety of available munitions gave the Type 99 flexibility in combat, ranging from armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabo projectiles capable of penetrating heavily armored vehicles, to high-explosive anti-tank rounds, to fragmentation shells suited for soft targets and fortifications. Perhaps most significantly, the Type 99 was also compatible with laser-guided anti-tank missiles of the 9M119 Reflex family, originally of Russian origin, giving it the capacity to engage armored targets at extended ranges with precision. This blend of gun-launched missiles and conventional shells allowed the tank to adapt to a wide spectrum of battlefield roles. Supporting this primary weapon were secondary systems including a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun for infantry suppression and a 12.7mm heavy machine gun mounted on the turret roof for air defense or light vehicle engagement. Smoke grenade dischargers on either side of the turret allowed the crew to conceal their movements when threatened. Collectively, these weapons provided layered options for the crew to respond to threats ranging from infantry with portable rockets to low-flying helicopters. The sophistication of the Type 99's fire control system represented another leap forward for Chinese tank design. Earlier generations of tanks often struggled with limited night fighting capability, rudimentary sights, or stabilization issues that prevented accurate firing on the move. The Type 99 addressed these shortcomings with a suite that included stabilized day-slash-night sights for both commander and gunner, thermal imaging equipment, a laser rangefinder, a digital ballistic computer, and a two-axis gun stabilizer. Environmental sensors measuring factors such as wind speed, barrel wear, and temperature-fed data into the computer, allowing the system to generate precise firing solutions. The thermal imaging feeds were displayed on color screens within the crew stations, offering magnification levels suited to both target detection and fine aiming. The system even included an auto-tracking function that could lock onto moving targets, reducing crew workload and improving engagement times. Navigation aids combined inertial and satellite-based inputs, projecting location data onto digital maps visible to the commander. This network of electronic subsystems transformed the Type 99 into a far more effective fighting machine, capable of operating at night, in adverse weather, and in high-tempo maneuver battles. The tank's mobility was ensured by a German-influenced, domestically produced diesel engine delivering 1,500 horsepower with turbocharging and water cooling. At a combat weight of approximately 54 tons, this gave the Type 99 an impressive power-to-weight ratio approaching 28 horsepower per ton. On paved roads the vehicle could achieve speeds of up to 80 km per hour, while in rough terrain it could sustain 60 km per hour. Acceleration from a standstill to 32 km per hour took only about 12 seconds, a figure that compared favorably with many contemporary tanks. The transmission was a mechanical planetary design with seven forward gears and one reverse, channeling power to a torsion bar suspension system augmented with hydraulic shock absorbers. These features gave the tank a relatively smooth ride across broken terrain and enabled accurate fire on the move, enhancing both survivability and offensive capability. Despite these impressive technical characteristics, the Type 99 was never produced in the same massive numbers as the Soviet T-72 or even the American Abrams. Instead, production remained limited, and the tanks were distributed selectively to elite units of the People's Liberation Army, particularly those stationed around Beijing and other strategic regions. Several reasons likely explain this decision. First, the complexity and cost of the Type 99 meant that large-scale adoption would strain resources. Second, the PLA may have wished to concentrate its most modern equipment in areas where it could have the greatest strategic impact, rather than dilute it across the entire force. Third, limiting production allowed China to test, refine, and evaluate the new technologies without committing to a full-scale replacement of its older but more numerous Type 96 tanks. This cautious approach reflected a balance between ambition and pragmatism, ensuring that the military could field a credible high-end capability without overstretching logistics or maintenance infrastructure. 
For all its strengths, the Type 99 is not without limitations. The reliance on advanced electronics and active defense systems requires a high standard of training and maintenance, placing demands on both crews and support personnel. The JD-3 laser system, while innovative, may face practical constraints in battlefield conditions, and international law and public opinion raise questions about the use of directed energy systems designed to affect human eyesight. Furthermore, the tank's weight, while moderate compared to Western designs, still poses challenges for mobility in some terrains and for transport by rail or air. The selective deployment of the Type 99 also means that, in a large-scale conflict, the bulk of Chinese armored forces would still consist of less advanced platforms. Nevertheless, the Type 99 has symbolic and practical significance. Symbolically, it demonstrates China's ability to field an indigenous third-generation main battle tank with features comparable to the best in the world. Practically, it provides the PLA with a high-performance platform capable of standing at the forefront of its armored spearhead. Its presence in elite formations contributes to deterrence, while its technological components have likely informed the development of subsequent designs, including the more recent Type 99A and other derivative models. In this sense, the Type 99 can be viewed both as an operational asset and as a stepping stone in China's broader trajectory toward a fully modernized armored force. As global militaries continue to evolve their doctrines and technologies, the Type 99 illustrates the challenges and opportunities of balancing innovation with practicality. Its modular armor and advanced fire control suite show how survivability and lethality can be enhanced through incremental but meaningful upgrades. Its active protection system highlights China's willingness to experiment with unconventional solutions. Its limited production run reflects the realities of cost, logistics, and doctrine. Taken together, these elements paint a picture of a tank that is less about dominating global numbers and more about signaling technological competence, deterring adversaries, and equipping select forces with a cutting-edge tool. In conclusion, the Type 99 main battle tank stands as one of the milestones in China's armored warfare history. It embodies the shift from reliance on foreign technology toward greater self-sufficiency, the embrace of electronic and optical warfare as integral components of armored operations, and the recognition that modern battlefields demand a multidimensional approach to protection and lethality. While not produced in vast numbers, its significance cannot be measured solely in quantity. Instead, it lies in the technological foundation it laid, the prestige it conferred upon the PLA, and the lessons it offered for future generations of Chinese tanks. As a fusion of firepower, protection, and advanced systems, the Type 99 remains both a symbol of national progress and a formidable weapon in the arsenal of the People's Liberation Army.